props really help you refine your alignment and actually help you go deeper in the poses. And if you have injuries, they're so helpful in allowing you to maintain a full practice. So let's begin by exploring some of the props that are most common. I really like to start my practice in this version of Virasana, and I elevate myself on blocks. You could also elevate yourself on a blanket, but let me show you some of the blocks that are available. When I began yoga, all the blocks were these really solid wood blocks. And so you may find that some studios, some people still practice with the wood blocks. I find them a little bit loud when they fall over and, um, and they're heavy. So I actually prefer the lighter blocks. And there's a whole variety that you can choose from. I prefer wide blocks and again, lighter just because it's easier to move them around. But there are also cork blocks that are wonderfully stable and uh, available in many places. You'll also find some narrow blocks. If you look at um, the width of, of one of these blocks compared to the wider blocks, you'll see that because of this narrow width, it's a little bit harder to find that stability but some people prefer them. Another thing you'll find as one of the more common yoga props out there are straps. This happens to be a cotton strap with a D-ring. And I like these D-rings because it's really easy both to store, but also easy in, in use you'll find that people can really uh, use these pretty rapidly by just threading through uh, the tongue, through the D-ring and back again. Whereas the plastic buckles that are also found, you'll find, especially if you're a teacher, that it takes a long time for people to really figure those straps out. So two really important uh, props that you'll want to use in your practice. And also to have, some people use a towel, a beach towel for this. More commonly, especially in yoga studios, you'll find blankets. And the probably the most common blankets used today are these cotton Mexican blankets. They're inexpensive. One of the issues with them is it's very hard for them to keep their form. Sometimes with these uh, edges here, you'll find them sort of collapsing on you. But they're inexpensive, they're cotton, so they breathe nicely. Back in the day, these gray blankets, gray wool blankets, were what we always used. And of course, they're fabulous because of their stability and they're nice and thick. And for things like shoulder stands, for seated poses, they work really well. But for people that might have a sensitivity to wool, or if you're, work, uh, if you're practicing when it's really warm, then wool probably is not your go-to solution. So that's just three props, blocks, straps, and a blanket. And I kind of think that these are all important for us to begin with. You'll also be working with a wall, and walls are props in the yoga practice. And we've all got walls. That's something that you may hear teachers refer to oftentimes enable you to invigorate your practice even more fully. I like coming to my mat with all the props for each practice because it allows you to just explore and discover and create new poses and ways to go a little bit deeper into those poses that perhaps aren't that accessible to you. 
Thanks so much for considering using these props for your practice. And by all means, if the yoga studio or where you practice your yoga has these props, pick them up before you come to your mat. Grab a blanket, grab some blocks, grab a strap. And so you can explore using the props during the class. Namaste.